as a musician and, and so many other things. So we're mm-hmm. going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, I wanted to make sure y'all know that at the Bean Path, we do this every second Saturday. Uh, we're definitely going to be uh, ramping up later this year. We are doing this virtually because um, of COVID, of course. But remember, we'll be back in action pretty soon. I hope everybody out there uh, is feeling good. You're feeling healthy. Um, you're ready for today. Um, we have uh, a special edition today. We're calling this, uh, instead of a fireside chat, this is our beach side chat. So I'm at my virtual beach. Joe is at his virtual beach. And uh, we're just having fun. We got clothes on, though. It's, it's not that type of beach. We, <laughs> we just, you know, we're just having a, a good conversation and talking about technology today. Um, so I want to, uh, I'm Dr. Nashley Cephas. Uh, I am uh, the founder of the Bean Path. And I, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be here today and to talk with the team uh, uh, <clears throat> and the people that the team to have us here today talking with Joe. Uh, we have uh, different attendees joining us. Um, I see a few already coming into the Zoom. <clears throat> we're also on Facebook um, and we're also will post the video later for viewing um, from our website as well as from YouTube. Um, so definitely tell people, share the links, uh, make sure they know that we're here, we're live, and you can also watch it later. All right. So without further ado, I want to introduce my friend, uh, my pal here, uh, mm-hmm. Joe, Mr. Joe Dent. He yep. is, how you doing, Joe? Hey, you know, I'm doing good. You know, it's a little wet outside, but hey. <laughs> oh, Look, we got, we got uh, right. palm trees and, and, yep. and everything, yes. islands out there. No, it's raining in Georgia, but right now, in my mind, I'm on the beach, you know. Right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, y'all, Joe is uh, uh, definitely, um, like I mentioned, he's an artist. Um, he's also known as 3-7. Am, am I pronouncing that right? 3-7 yeah, or 3-7? Three three seven. Seven? Okay. Um, he's a creative artist. Um, he's an Atlanta transplant, but he's born and raised in Columbus, Mississippi. Come on, um, now. Those, those hey. y'all don't know, I went to Mississippi State. Um, yeah. So definitely all about the Golden Triangle area. Um, I definitely go back there to visit as well. Uh, yeah. I'm originally from Jackson, but hey, it's all Mississippi love up in here. Uh, yeah, so the national champions, Mississippi State. When you say that from now, on, you know, Hell State, Hell <laughs> State, and you and you also uh, state uh, went to state for um, art um, hmm. and and science. I, I know that you do a little bit, uh, and you have some sciences scientists in your family. Uh, mm-hmm. as well one of them is, is my line sister right uh, miss shelly dent <laughs> shout out to her uh right. and so um i know y'all have some some beautiful children uh which i i know they're already ramping up and getting ready to code and been doing a little bit of that <laughs> as well i'm sure you got them with the yeah. artistry and, and the music going as well um yeah. now i i see where you say uh growing up in the late 80s and 90s in mississippi was not the most ideal place for a creative young mind uh, to fully flourish, uh, but right. you enjoyed every bit of it growing up there. So I want to just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, let's talk about that growing up in Mississippi and yeah. how how did that, you know, influence or shape, you know, who you are and who you became today? Well, you know, like I was saying, growing up in Mississippi, like I tell everybody this, like it, I, I wouldn't want to grow up in no other place because it kind of it kind of teach you a lot, you know what I'm saying, about life. I always look at Mississippi as a microcosm of America and this whole country. Like it's it 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 gives you it makes you way around it and it makes you respect a lot of things. And so like I said, growing up just as a creative child, you know what I'm saying, I've been around music and art my whole life. Like I started playing drums at seven at church. I was drawing ever since kindergarten like <clears throat> just always in into creating come from mississippi sometimes those avenues aren't really open you know what i'm saying like you would see in bigger cities you just don't have a lot of resources you know it's just not a lot of you don't have a lot of influences like say like a city like atlanta where you have tons of people who've gone on and made great strides in the arts and entertainment to for a young person to look up to and be like, hey, you know, I want that guy from my street. I can if he can do it, I can do it. So Absolutely. that's what I mean about, you know, what I'm saying growing up in Mississippi, we just, you know, is it's not 
a derogative thing, but mm-hmm. we just we just didn't have that, those resources and we just didn't have the people to really look up to and to aspire to to be like, hey, if he did it, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? That's important. You know, it's that representation. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> that's kind of what I was uh, meaning by that. But like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to grow up, grew up anywhere else but Mississippi, you know, so that's that's just kind of what it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like, I know, uh, you know, everywhere I go, I I I tell everybody I'm from Mississippi, yeah. and I'm like, you know, you know, and they and they, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, I, I definitely understand, you know, y'all are some strong people, you know, mm-hmm. a lot a lot of the civil rights movement started um, in Mississippi, uh, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, Mega Evers, uh, before it was even you know, as widespread in the Atlanta area, even. Right. Um, so a lot of those roots are there, very strong people. Um, and on the other hand, sometimes when you say you're from Mississippi, you know, you get people that are like, uh, you know, oh, you know, y'all, you know, racist and all that. Um, yeah. So, but, but, you know, I think it's something to be said about, you know, the strength of the people yeah. coming from there, how talented we are, um, how multifaceted we are. Um, right. Tell us about some of your early, uh, you know, musical uh, and artist uh, inspirations uh, coming from Mississippi. Well, as far as like art and music inspirations, uh, like me, man, like I, like I was just saying, I grew up in the church. Like my, my mom is a minister. Like we went to church Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday and Saturday, if, if need be. So, like, I, I always grew up around gospel music. And um, so that gospel has always been a big influence, you know what I'm saying, as far as, like, music lives to me. Like, you talk, you from Jackson, uh, the Canton Spiritual, the Jackson Southern Air, like, this was, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying, this was my daddy was listening to, you know what I'm saying, every Sunday when we get up, get ready for church. But, like I said, as I kind of grow older and growing into myself, like, um, I, I, I was born and raised in the hip hop, you know what I'm saying, generation. So like you think about 89, 90, I'm probably like kindergarten. My brother, he's going out to college. He's coming back home from Alcorn with, you know what I'm saying, the Snoop Dogs, the uh two shorts, you know what I'm saying? Like all of these late, <clears throat> these early 90 hip hop groups. And so that early hip hop mixed with that gospel. It's a strange combination, but that's kind of where my influence, you know what I'm saying, lied. And, and, and like I said, just growing up in the hip hop generation, UGK, you know what I'm saying, the the Triple Six, mm-hmm. and Outkast, Atlanta, all these different type of Southern artists really like, you know, it really crafted my musical, you know what I'm saying, um, side. I mean, as far as like art, um, it's crazy because I really didn't, I really didn't understand or get into art until I got to college. You know, I always could draw. I always was good at drawing and stuff like that, but I didn't really know about art. The only thing I knew about art growing up was Bob Ross. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, see Bob <laughs> where, that, Ross. where that tree at? How that tree yeah, look? Tree, you know what I'm saying? Little happy clouds. Little, you know, so that, that was my influence as a young cat growing up in Mississippi was like Bob Ross because he was on TV. That's the only thing you've seen. So like when I got to college, that's when I started learning about like artists like Basquiat and you know Keith Haring and that movement in the 80s and everything and and you know just even fine art like you know the Picasso's and all these things really didn't hit me till you know I'm an adult, you know, some young adult, but so just having the experience of, of of learning some of these things late in life, it just taught me to appreciate it more. So, like, that's kind of where, uh, you know what I'm saying, where I'm at as far as, like, influences on art and, and music and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. That, that's so true. I kind of got the Bob Ross uh, afro going on. Yeah, yeah, I see right you now. right there. Yeah, yeah. You uh, about it. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, we could have coordinated <laughs> a little bit better on that. Uh, <laughs> But no, it's all. It looks good. It looks good. I like the uh, the fresh, the, the braids yeah, there. Uh, so, so I know that you actually, um, you know, are into illustration and painting. Mm-hmm. Um, right. You're a beat maker. You're a producer. Um, you, you mentioned right now that you were had some current projects going on in terms of uh, 
you know, uh, children's books, animations, and uh, and even on the music side, some projects. So tell us a little bit more about what you have going on here right now. Yeah, um, I'm kind of always working. Like I said, I, I do a lot of freelance um, graphic design. So like I'm always working on clients with logos or promotional stuff. But as far as like big projects, I'm always kind of ongoing with like three, two or three like major, you know what I'm saying, contacts and clients. So Right now, I've been working with uh, Chef Marlo. He's a chef here in Atlanta. Uh, the dude is like hands down, probably like the most talented guy when I know it's come to cooking. Like I don't eat a lot of stuff. This dude will make stuff, and I be eating it, and I'll be like, man, you know what? Like it took twenty years for me to eat certain things. Like the way he chef, chef it up. <laughs> all right, so like I um I handle all his far as his marketing the website, anytime he needs any kind of promotional design, like I'm I'm kind of his guy to go to. So that's ongoing. And through him, uh, he connected me with his business partner and friend, Anthony Wilkes, who has the, um, he has a company, a foundation, the Logan Wilkes Foundation. So it's a nonprofit here in Atlanta. He does a lot of things with the kids uh, in the school system as far as like just healthy living, healthy eating. And so, um, a friend of his, a lady, Miss Miss Cadwell, and her daughter wrote a book, Aaliyah Adventures. And so I've been illustrating this uh, children's book for her in this series. And we just dropped a, well, we just finished a coloring book that'll be coming out, you know what I'm saying, pretty soon. And uh, so that's, that's kind of two of the main ones. Then, like, I, I also worked with uh, an Atlanta artist here, Scotty ATL. Um, just as far as creative, anything creative with him um, is on a daily basis. I'm working with him. So he has a grill shop. He just opened out in LA. Uh, he has a grill, a gold grill shop here in Atlanta. So I handle a lot of the marketing material for that. Um, any kind of issues on the website, rollouts. He also, we also just dropped a, a, a album back, uh, was that February? Trapping Gold. So as far as that, I help with the rollout, the album cover. It's in like anything, anything creative is 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 kind of my my spot with with these three guys. And so it's been it's been cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I love it because they they trust me with their mm -hmm. brand and I trust and believe in what they're doing. So it just works good. It works good together. Wow, that's that's amazing. You you've done so much uh album cover designs, marketing. I heard that website, you, you snuck that one in there. So, yeah, so let's, yeah. let's transition a little bit. So, you know, obviously all these things, uh, what we what we preach at the Bean Path is that pretty much whatever you do, you're going to need some type of technology. You're going right. to need to know how to do some type of website or code, even when it comes to social media. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about designing things and graphics. Um, I'm curious to know, uh, and for others out there interested in, you know, going into these uh, these more artistic fields as, as freelancers, tell us what like what tech tools do you use and software um, tools, and, and what are some of your your favorites out there? Uh, maybe even some that you don't necessarily like as much. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, as far as like tech and 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 where it's going with art and design, it's like man, it's it's moving so fast. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm from a, oh, yeah. I'm from an era that was like in between like print and like traditional design when it comes to like uh, magazines and just print material. And then the web internet hit and like everything, you know what I'm saying, kind of changed and shifted. So I kind of seen both sides of it. But like technology, I mean, it plays a huge role as far, especially in design and art now than I think ever, you know, it just makes your, mm -hmm. it makes your workflow so much easier. You know, I can remember, um, um, it's about 10, 10 years ago, or close to 10, I was doing, um, the album cover for Scotty ATL. We did a project called Faith Forever Atlanta in the Heart. It was hosted by DJ Byron One. It was like 2012, I think. And I did all these art pieces. I had to draw them out painted them but I had like 10,000 pieces of paper that I had to go scan in now you got an iPad I can just bloop 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 and like do 
that in like half the time. So technology is really like, it just sped up the workflow of designers and, and, and illustrators to the point to where you can get your ideas straight out of it from your brain to, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to this piece of equipment with no lag time. Like it's, it's, to me, I think that's the best part about right now. It's like being able to have an idea, you can whip out your phone, whip out an iPad right where you are, couple of clicks and boom, you you know what I'm saying? You you have mm -hmm. it right there. So I think with me, that's the biggest part. So I use a lot of um apps on my iPad. Like Procreate is uh -huh. a big it's one of my main apps I use. I also use this app uh called Infinity Designer. It's like I, I switched over to it like probably a year or so ago to because Photoshop doesn't really have a an iPad app. Well it has it but it is it really isn't like the full blown Photoshop, but I found this affinity design. Like, oh man, this is something new, and it is just like Photoshop. So I've been working in that a lot. Adobe right. Illustrator you know, and these kind of basic stuff, I kind of do a lot. Um, but as far as like, um, like I said, app, it just it just makes everything easier. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm -hmm. the workflow is so much quicker now than versus ten years ago when you had to actually go scan in textures you had to like <laughs> really you know what i'm saying scan everything that you need you had to scan it in and cut it out it's just it just takes all that out of it you know what i'm saying the equation that you like to get an idea straight out you know what i'm saying to the pad so i'm loving it got you yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's good and I, and I guess on the um on the music side are you more like a logic uh person or or any other tools that you that you use uh, as far as like uh, making music, I use Native Instruments, the machine. Okay. Um, so that's kind of been what I've been rocking with for probably, probably last about six or seven years. And I started out with Fruity Loops, kind of like mm -hmm. every producer who's ever started in the this era of um, digital, you know what I'm saying, music making. Mm -hmm. Fruity Loops was the main what's the main thing you you learned and like i said kind of saying the same thing i was saying about the art oh, come from this this weird era where i remember the real to real recording in the studio like the cadillac records type deal right. <laughs> where you wires everywhere and it's like now you're on the computer you got a thousand plugins in a folder <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? Where, it, where like i said 20 years ago that would have took a whole side of your house to mm. to fill with different pieces of equipment and so it, i'd say it's just technology has made your workflow so much better when it comes to creating whether it's music mm -hmm. or whether it's art but like me <clears throat> on the music side like i use native instruments machine and uh it's it's what i like about it is so it's kind of the same thing like what i said with the pro to with the uh procreate you get your ideas out. You know, I can, yeah. I can hear a sample in the car. I can you can come home, boom, put it in, chop it up, and like within an hour or less, you got a beat. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. like I said, ten years yeah. ago, that took you two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so I was um, you so so, you know, again, technology, it helps you do things. It's supposed to make your life easier. And I know there's some right. situations where people you know, misuse the technology, you know, uh, you know, and things like that, but um, it's, it's intended to be a tool. Um, right. And the more that we educate ourselves and our communities about these tools, you know, the more we can take off, you know, maybe you, maybe you are uh, your, your uh, son or your daughter or, or whoever's listening out there, maybe you are the next uh, big producer. You just right. uh, haven't gotten acclimated with a certain tool. And um, I was actually watching a interview one day, uh, on YouTube, it was uh, the Clark sisters um, were oh. giving this interview, and they were saying that you know back then you didn't have like recording, you can have tapes to record on, and nah. so whenever uh, their mom, uh, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, whenever she had something in her head, it could be two o'clock in the in the morning, she right. was like, okay, girls, y'all come. They were they were telling the story. They were saying, okay, she was she would come and wake them up. Two yeah. in the morning and like, come on, I got to get this out of my head. I need y'all to get these parts and sing. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, mama, please. But <laughs> they had to get up and they had to learn the parts. And that's her way of recording 
the, right. the music um, yeah. back then. So uh, yeah. just just amazing how far we've come and uh, good thing that we have technology, you know, at our at our hands. Um, and, and just um, I'll pause real briefly. Anybody who has any questions, we'll um, switch over to, to any questions uh, that may be from the audience uh, in about 10 minutes or so. So uh, feel free to write your question in the Q&A if you're um, on Facebook or our other platforms or, or right here on Zoom. Uh, you can put it in the Q&A and uh, we'll make sure we um, get your questions answered today. Um, all right. So I want to I want to kind of ask you some more uh, questions uh, around, uh, you know, so, so in today's world, um, it's, it's very difficult for people to get going, to get started. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of challenges, especially now, especially after last year. Um, I think they said artists were some of the first people um, to struggle um, and to and to be, you know, even even the big the big name artists, you know, they're so used to having shows. We have to stop that. Uh, so just in general, I'm, I'm just curious, what are some of the biggest challenges um, in the in the tech and art industry, uh, you know, or the music industry? Uh, mm -hmm. if, and what are some ways that you work to overcome those challenges? Um, I, I thought, well, kind of like what you were saying, um, with everything that went on this year with the pandemic and it forced a lot of people, especially creative people to really start thinking outside of the box on how to monetize yourself. Like you said, artists wasn't, they weren't touring, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they weren't doing shows. So when that money starts to dry up, either something's going to click that we're like, all right, I have to get in, go into survival mode and figure out how to um, make another wave in another sector. Or like I say, you're going to, you're going to get left behind the same way with like um, the art and graphic design. Like sometimes people think, you know, because you paint or you illustrate like that. Oh, I love your art. And, think it's just flying off the off the wall it's like but that's not the case all the time so and you and last year kind of like put a damper on that I, I feel like because you, you weren't having many art shows you just people weren't out and so you have these people creating these pieces and there's no way to get them out so it forced artists to start thinking in different ways and how to start really monetizing their art on the internet and in and, and ways mm -hmm. that you know just a little bit less traditional than your your typical galleries and whatnot so i think the that like i said the pandemic kind of showed a lot of a lot of people on the creative side that you have to kind of diversify mm -hmm. yourself when it comes to your creativity you really can't get you can't can't get locked in into to to one stream and thinking that's going to be safe. So I, I, I think that was a hurdle that a lot of people were facing, just you know, trying to figure out how to how to maximize, you know what I'm saying, their potential and, and their creativity to where it can still sustain them when it when things kind of go, you know what I'm saying, go left. So I, that's that's kind of what I took, you know what I'm saying, from as a challenge, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I and I know that uh, you know it, a lot of people again it, they had to uh, learn more about technology. They had to you know like you said start yeah. selling things online. Uh, I think I was just uh, visiting uh, on the, on the Gulf Coast uh, an old record shop. They were like they actually made more money than they've ever made last year because they switched to online sales because yeah. nobody's coming into the the um, this is vinyl. You know they were right. selling vinyl. Um, and they they said they made more money than they ever made um, last year. Yeah. It's just like you said, shifting that mindset. Um, how do you adapt? How do you adjust? Uh, yeah. And then use these tech tools to to get to where you need to be. And that's, you know, and that's like I said, that's a challenge. But some because sometimes I think with as creative people that I know for me sometimes it's hard to like you know shift your mindset. You know, what I'm saying? especially when it's a field that you're not really comfortable with, you don't know a lot about. It's like you you don't want to take a leap and risk losing it all. So that, like you said, but it is it's necessary, you know what I'm saying, to to take these 
these leaps because it, it pushes you further into the direction that you need to that you need to go to be successful so mm -hmm. i definitely agree with you like i've seen the same thing on music side like even with the explosion of like nfts now you know mm -hmm. and how this whole new world came about during this pandemic of digital art and how artists uh had to rethink how you know what I'm saying how art will be sold and created from now on you know what I'm saying that and I yeah. think that that was a a product of getting getting out of that comfort zone and pushing past that 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 hurdle of not being able to create in a traditional way anymore yeah and it, and in terms of NF you give a quick um a quick description of NFTs or how you you're describing it for those who may not know uh what that is um so I'm honestly, I'm kind of new. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, I get you. <laughs> but you know, NFTs is a it's a way that artists can create digital assets and they have this, like you said, this blockchain technology. If people like if you're in the tech world, you know what blockchain technology is and where you're able to mint and pretty much just stamp your digital assets. Because up until now, you put something on Instagram, you put it, you draw a picture, you put it on Instagram, and it's out there. Anybody can go click and save it. Anybody can grab it. You know, it's it's no real authentic <coughs> cert with like certificate to go mm -hmm. along with this digital asset. So now with NFTs and just the whole blockchain movie, you can like stamp each mm -hmm. piece of digital artwork you have and in turn sell them on marketplaces where <coughs> it's it's working in the um I mean if, if you familiar with crypto the ethereum uh coin base and people are making tons of money in the mm -hmm. new space in this art world all uh, because like i said the, the technology has allowed for you know a, a new space to be created so right, right. and it's it's a, it's a, a new thing like i said i'm fairly new my my homie dj burn one actually is the guy who kind of like put me up on it like when it kind of mm -hmm. first hit he called me he was like hey man doo -doo -doo -doo. and he was just like you see was so excited about it and i was like man i just i went and i started looking it up myself and it's like mm -hmm. man it's it's the next it's the next wave i feel like as far as like creating in a digital space in a digital world so yeah yeah and so, and i know i know that um a lot of people, if you're familiar with the NFT, it, and, and it's just basically like a, like you said, like like a stamp of uh, the way you can stamp your stuff that's online. If it's your, if it belongs to you, if it's your artwork, um, almost like a little hidden fingerprint or a hidden signature. So you can always trace that back to you right. uh, no matter what. So if somebody tries to sell it, you're going to get a cut. Yeah, okay. And if they sell it, you're going to get a cut. And if they sell it, you're going to always right. get a cut because your, your signature is always tied to it. Um, which is which is kind of cool when you think about it. It's all made possible with the blockchain technology, which is the same technology that that uh, you know Bitcoin and all these cryptocurrency, uh, which is popular now, um, is being powered by. Yeah. Um, and if you might have seen, uh, uh, I think it was LeBron James, him dunking uh, yeah. his his NFT. Whoever took that picture, that photographer. Um, yeah. and, and he worked with LeBron too. I'm sure. Uh, I think they ended up selling it for for some like billions of dollars yes. um it's just a picture of him dunking. <laughs> it's, but it, it's, it's cool though because um what is what i think is is, is early in the game so it's, mm -hmm. it's still a lot of skepticism out there about nfts and cryptocurrency and where it's really gonna go but the idea of now artists being able to really be compensated you know what i'm saying for work but for so long like photographers illustrators you, you get this tag put on you as a starving artist, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, your artwork is supposed to come from your heart and your soul and the money will come. It's like, I don't know about that. Like I want right. to get, I want to get paid too. So this is really allowing for artists to really um, collect some checks in the art world. And like I said, it's, it's crypto based. So, the 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 future of it is like really unknown, you know. So it's mm -hmm. um it's I got, what's the it's a guy 
It's an artist named Bebel, I think his name is. He had like an NFT collection. I think it sold for like a couple million. It sold out in like maybe less than an hour. It was like two or three million. It's like it was a mm-hmm. astronomical number for just an artist. And it's like you seeing these different artists kind of like popping up doing the same thing and it's like it's, I don't know just creating a, an exciting new space even on the music side too I think it's gonna it's gonna creep over there because mm-hmm. like I said it's like we think about royalties mm-hmm. and 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 the, the 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 nature of the music landscape and producers getting paid and artists getting paid like that's gonna I don't know it's, it's, it's gonna put a it's gonna put a a, a a a curve in the music industry. I think sooner or later, once they really yeah. tap into it and figure it out. So yeah, uh, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm excited about it too, cause um, you know, a lot of what we do, especially on on uh, as as an AI person in artificial intelligence, we use a lot of uh, mm-hmm. data and, and digital assets that. You know, we don't know where it came from. Uh, fake, you think about face recognition, taking pictures of somebody's face. Um, a lot of times, uh, up until recently, there was no government policies on, mm-hmm. um, you know, regulations around just using people's faces in yeah. algorithms, right? <clears throat> and so now, you know, with, like you said, with things like NFT and, and digital signing, uh, you can maybe trace some of these pictures back mm-hmm. to these people and maybe say, yeah. okay, hey, your your face or your speech or your handwriting or whatever it was is, is used in this algorithm. Maybe we can start compensating you for that. Um, so that's just now, now that's my idea. Now, if anybody out there take that, make sure I get a cut off. Of that. <laughs> all right, man. But, um, all right. So let, I'm, I'm curious now, uh, because it, it can be difficult to be uh, an artist. I know you have a family, um, you're also balancing several other things and just how do you find the work life balance? Um, you know, how do you manage to, to do it all and, and still yeah. have your creativity, not go crazy. Cause you know, something's yeah. not going wrong in other parts of your life, but yeah, how do you keep it going? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, a, that's, I think that's going to be uh, a forever challenge in any mm-hmm. creative person. Like, especially my situation, like I said, being a husband, a father, you know, you know, a freelancer working is, you're juggling so many different things at one time. And, and, and truth be told, it's hard to stay focused on, you know, being creative. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of times people look at creative people and just think you can turn the switch on. You know, like, oh, you're good at drawing. You're good at Photoshop. Just, oh, you want to take, you know, and it, and it sometimes it's like that and sometimes it's not. Just like you, just like a... Uh, uh, you, you have to draw inspiration from, from places. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Me, I kind of like try to uh, put myself around, you know what I'm saying, other creative people. That kind of that kind of helps me a lot to stay focused. Oh, and it inspired me as well too to, to get out and to, to, to make some stuff on my own. So I try to be around other creative people, you know, just kind of like taking in different um, type of projects or just trying to learn new, you know what I'm saying? Learn new things. Like now I'm trying to learn um, the 3D space, you know, I've been mm-hmm. working in Blender, you know what I'm saying? Trying to just learn where design and 3D is, is coming together and where it's going to. So mm-hmm. those type of things help me to kind of stay uh focus but it's it's hard i mean i think any creative person music artist or whatever can probably say the same thing because life don't stop just because somebody need you know saying somebody needs artwork done or a logo created or a song mixed or you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying like it it, the the things around you is not gonna they don't care that you got a deadline like Mm -hmm. your car breaks down or your child gets sick, the the client doesn't care, but you have to find a way, you know what I'm saying, to push through and still meet the demand. So it's a it's a it's a crazy circus, but you know, it's it's one of the things if you get into the creative field, you kind of just gotta know these things you're gonna have to juggle with. So mm-hmm. but I, I 
I hope that I imagine it, imagine it pretty well. You know? <laughs> right, right. No, that's, I mean, you, you're so right. I think a lot of us uh, have those challenges, uh, even outside of the, the creatives, um, yeah. but even more so, uh, like you said, as creative. And, and I think, too, that uh, being technical, uh, like, for example, coding, app development, um, designing anything, it takes creativity. Um, yeah. So a lot of people think just because you're technical, uh, like myself, I, you know, I, I have a musical background, uh, played in the church as well. Um, and I also am, you know, a scientist, an engineer. Uh, in order to come up with something new that nobody's ever done, in order to be an entrepreneur, you got to be creative. You got to think outside the box. Um, yeah. So it's a lot of those same uh, challenges, I imagine, um, mm-hmm. that I, I can also relate to. Um, mm-hmm. I want to, let's see, I think we actually do have a few few questions here. Um, okay. I want to make sure we get these answers. So, all right. So first one is, um, do you, well, actually, I'm sorry, before I actually get into these questions, I want to make sure y'all know that we have uh, uh, Mr. Joe Dent's information. Um, his Instagram is three, uh, seven, it's spelled yeah. S-E-A-V-E-N, um, yeah. so, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. And he has a website um arts and then the letter n craft spelled with a k uh dot uh com so you can check out his website you can check out all of his uh apparel on there some of his artwork as well as some amazing pieces on there uh please definitely check that out um all right so now we're gonna uh, i think we put those in the chat too yeah so we'll have those we put those up in there uh yeah we did all right all right so let's get to our questions from the audience now um, so this one I think is from Facebook. Uh, so Mr. Joe, uh, do you have any online art shows? If so, where on the web can I find them? Uh, online art shows, I don't have anything like that. I, I, I do have the website artsandcrafts.com where I have some illustrations and things up and mm-hmm. um, I have a couple um, pieces of apparel up, but that's, that's kind of where I've been posting a lot of my art you can check out my instagram it's three seven it should be in the uh chat i post a lot on there i kind of slowed up you know what i'm saying as far as the pandemic and just kind of juggling some other things so but i'm 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 getting back around to posting more consistently as far as content and trying to get inspired to to create you know that more so check out those and uh like i said connect with me on on instagram and i just kind of keep you updated through that yeah, yeah, you definitely have some stuff on there. You, you've done some uh, some other interviews and things, too. Definitely check them out. Uh, and then another uh, question kind of related, saying, do you sell the original pieces or photos? And I think those are on your, you're saying those are on your website? Yeah, I have some prints, some prints on the website. A lot of my original okay. pieces, um, I, I kind of, they're commissioned. So anything or original that somebody's kind of commissioning, and I sell those, and and sometimes I sell the ones that I just kind of paint, you know what I'm saying, for fun. But most of my artwork, as far as prints are concerned, they, they like I said, they're on the website. Yeah, yeah, definitely check those out. Um, all right, we got another question here from Dr. Amber. Uh, mm-hmm. She says, what tools do you use for illustrating books and mm-hmm. any things you wish you would have known before entering the space of illustrating books? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, mainly I use Procreate and um, the Adobe Adobe Illustrator app on my iPad. And I, I kind of use my iPad fully for all type of uh, illustration work. Mm-hmm. So those are two main apps. Um, what I wish I would have known before tackling illustrations and book, children's books. Um, the, that it's a, it's a, it's a very, lengthy and time consuming <laughs> process like um just from the storyboarding to sketching to like inking to coloring to the um text placement it's it, it takes a while you know what I'm saying to do and so my first couple projects of, of working in illustrating a book you know I kind of you know what I'm saying? As any rookie mistake, you kind of underestimate, you know, the the, the time that it's going to take to put into it. So I, I wish I would have um, probably had someone who was already in that space to kind of like 
mentor me and kind of guide me so I can kind of see where the pitfalls would be. But, you know, I kind of had to learn a lot of that just in the growing process of it. And so by the time I got to my next one, okay, I know, oh, we're going to need a, a longer window. We're going to need to, you know what I'm saying, structure it this way this, you know, and, and so on. So it's just having that, you know, having that, that, that mentorship, I think was the biggest piece that I didn't really have. And when I come into children's books, illustration, and just being a freelance illustration, illustrator mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that is, you never think about that too. Like you yeah. would think, oh, it's a child's book, right? It's it's easy, right? But it's not. <laughs> it's, it's even more involved, right? Yeah, it's it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like the the story and just making sure that you 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 draw and illustrate a visual that's going to connect to the words that the author, you know, what I'm saying wrote is kind of the most important thing. You 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 won't. You want people to when they're reading this, they they can see exactly, you know what I'm saying, what what the words are saying. And that's a big, you know what I'm saying, that's a a big part of it. And it takes, you know what I'm saying, it takes time to kind of sketch those out, make sure you're getting the right composition and, mm-hmm. and yeah. right text placement. You want everything to read fluid. So it's it's a lot that goes into it to get the final product, but uh, you know, I, I enjoy. I enjoy the end product when, you know, I see the kids, you know what I'm saying, posting about the book and saying they love it. So, like, that all kind of makes it, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, worthwhile. So, it's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, once you're done with some of those uh, additional projects you're working on, we'll be able to see those, order those, um, take right, a look yeah. at his artwork <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, the, okay. The, uh, the Aaliyah, Aaliyah's Adventures is on Amazon. Also, my my partner, Chef Marlo, I work with him on a cookbook. And so he has a uh, he has a cookbook. It's also on Amazon. You see the flavor volume one. So yeah, y'all can go in there, check it out, support them, man. They they doing they doing good things and, and helping out a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we'll do. I definitely uh, check it out. Uh, we got another question here. Uh, it says do you think that because of the pandemic, you've made more money than before? And what are your plans for keeping your popularity? And this is from somebody on YouTube. Okay. Uh, yeah, during the pandemic, I think a lot of people made a lot of money. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's funny. And, and I was reading an article the other day and it was like, it was really high among Black business owners that, you know, a, a lot of Black business owners made more gains in these last year or so than you know what I'm saying were previously I think for me I definitely seen a rise in, in people starting businesses so I've been doing a lot of logos you know I've been seeing a lot of people uh promoting their business more being active so I'm doing a lot of you know promotional designs and whatnot so that definitely kept me kept me busy which in turn keeps me you know that keeps me paid so that uh that part of it, but as far as the future, my popularity, I, I don't know. I kind of don't really like the spotlight a lot, but a lot of people have been telling me lately that you need to get out there, you know what I'm saying? So I'm yes, trying, sir. You need to get out there. To work on, you know what I'm saying, my uh, stage presence and just being out here on the internet. So I'm, I, I think you'll see a lot more of my face. I want to start like doing more of these, talking, having conversations about art, having conversations about music. I'm definitely going to get back into uh, painting and drawing more, just creating more content, I think, is what's on my plate kind of going forward, you know, just yeah. giving people more. So two, two things you said there made me think. Um, so one, like you said, when people were at home during the pandemic. A lot of people were laid off or a lot right. of people just had additional time. Uh, they started forming other businesses. Yeah. Um, the entrepreneurship game is is alive and well right now. And like right. you said, that – that benefits you because now you you're designing more logos, you're designing right. more uh, social media templates or what or what have you. More websites uh-huh. are coming out of that, um, yeah. and again, it all goes back to these these tech tools that help enhance your your business or make your life easier. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's great to hear that 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 was a result a resulting thing for you. Um, and also, if y'all y'all if y'all just 
follow uh, uh, Joe or just look at a couple of his posts, like they will leave you thinking about life. <laughs> like I was like, whoa, what did he just say, man? That was deep. Yeah. You know, and he'll he'll just be driving in the car, like, you know, I just want to say two things, y'all. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. And I'm like, what, man? You just like. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, it, it, you know, it ain't, you know, I, I'm just type of person, man. Like sometimes when God puts stuff on your heart, you know, saying you gotta put it out there for people because mm-hmm. it may not, it ain't ain't nothing for you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I always somebody out there that's that's um they they waiting for a seed to get planted. So that's that's mm-hmm. kind of my, you know what I'm saying, mission, I feel like even in my art and in music, it's just it's, it's bigger than me. And so the stuff I create, I try to create something that's got some depth to it. Like a mm-hmm. lot of my, a lot of my pieces, um, <clears throat> it's like I said, it's, it's, it's about things that kind of went on in my life or things I, I see from other perspectives of other people likes that they maybe can't uh, express it, but I know how to visualize. It. So mm-hmm. I'm always trying to get people to, you know, think beyond kind of what, you were given, you know, mm-hmm. you know, especially like say coming from Mississippi and you know, you know how sometimes you you can you can get stuck in a mentality and a mind frame mm-hmm. that won't allow you to think beyond, you know what I'm saying, what you can see in front of your face. So um yeah, I, I just try to I just try to keep it real, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm glad you know that it's I always say if it's just one person get what I'm talking about then I'm good you know what I'm saying yeah. but yeah no nah, that's was- that's so true but people who live in places uh this is this is across the country uh this is across the world really you know Word. they don't have access to certain things or certain people in their communities in their environments that's the beauty of leveraging a tool like social media you can yeah. be exposed to so much more you can you can go visit the aquarium you know, that you've never yeah. been to, or you can listen to a philosopher, you know, we got so many platforms now. Um, it's really no excuse not to get the information that you need or, yeah. to, or to find the people that you need. Yeah, there's no excuse to not grow in this day and age, you know what I'm saying? In, in whatever aspect of life, where you're talking about personal, uh, business, and like, it, it's because the information is out there. It's just about how do you you know what I'm saying? How do you take it and receive it and start applying it to your life? And like something, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do sometimes for people. Like I'm I'm not immune to mm-hmm. anything I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. I always tell people, I'm I'm talking to myself first. So yeah. you don't think I'm, you know, I'm just telling you something to do that mm-hmm. I just, you know what I'm saying, master myself. Like I have it. I don't, I do not have all this together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everything we're talking about today is. It's, I'm, I've been learning as I, I as I go. I, like I said, I never had an art mentor. I never had somebody, you know, what I'm saying to just show me the ropes and certain things. So a lot of stuff I got to learn on my own. You know what I'm saying? So I, I try to I try to lead by example. Wow. And, you know, and just just kind of put just put good energy out there, for folks, and man, hopefully they receive what I do and what I make. And it help mm-hmm. them, you know what I'm saying, in some type of way. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I yeah, think we yeah. got a we got a couple more questions for you oh. uh, before we before we wrap up here. Um, we got one uh, one more here from uh, Dr. Ambers. She says, "Do you remember uh, Smarty Pants? <laughs> Smarty oh, Pants. Yeah. He used to be yeah. a, a guy that <laughs> for y'all who don't know, he used to be a guy who dressed up in his elephant suit." And he used to go around at different schools when we was little and, uh, you know, and just tell us about, you know, how to stay on the straight and narrow pretty much. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if we had back in, back in Columbia, we didn't have Smarty Pan, but we had Uncle Bunky. So if, Uncle anybody, Bunky. if anybody from the Golden Triangle, you grew up in the eighties, you knew who Uncle Bunky was. He was, uh, he was the, the character drawer for the Lowndes County Sheriff Department. So like he was the guy who drew like crime or something oh. happened. He was a sketch artist. But he had like this TV show in uh on Saturday morning. I guess you could say this probably was another influence of mine, but mm. he used to have all these kids there and, and like what his thing was, he would say, uh, what do you like? So one kid be like an elephant. So he'll draw an elephant head. And then he had another kid that'd be like giraffe, and he'd draw a giraffe by. So you had these weird animals at the end of it, but it kind of did the same thing, kind of telling kids, you know, just 
you know, trying to stay on the, the straight path. You know, in the 80s, this was the the dare. You know, that this was when mm-hmm. dare was popular. So, like, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was that positive reinforcement through art with Uncle mm-hmm. Bunky. So, yeah, if you, yeah. you from Columbus, start from West Point, you know about Uncle Bunky. For real. Yeah, the, the dare, the, the drug awareness uh, mm-hmm. era, you know, don't do drugs. Yeah. Um, I guess how how do you think uh your work can impact youth, um, especially for example, youth in Mississippi, maybe? Or do you yeah. have any aspirations around that? <laughs> yeah, I definitely I definitely want to, you know what I'm saying, be that person that that you know that, that people can look up to from my area, especially and you know what I'm saying, Mississippi in general, that be like, hey man, Joe went out here. He, you know what I'm saying? He shot, he shot his shot and he, you know what I'm saying? He tried it. Even if I don't get to the level of success that I feel like I need to be, I know that somebody behind me seeing me and maybe they going to carry the torch further. And that's kind of, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of really what matters is like the torch keep getting carried. You know, I feel like in my situation <clears throat> coming from, you know what I'm saying? Columbus, I, you know, I, 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 I hope I, spark some 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 interest in graphic design i know a couple mm-hmm. graphic design young talented people around there that came after me that's gonna do way you know what i'm saying better than mm-hmm. i ever can imagine and, and i'm and i'm proud of them you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. for what they're doing so yeah, yeah. I, um, I definitely i definitely want to try to try to be that representation you know what I'm yeah saying? yeah some somebody uh, uh, was also asking about, you know, now that now that you are an expert, you're a subject matter expert, um, they were asking if you ever think about teaching or, um, you know, doing summer camps or if you ever attended any uh, that, you know, that were helpful. Uh, I, 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 you know, I come from a family of educators. My mom was an educator. Uh, my sister is a teacher. Mm-hmm. I have two cousins who are in, you know what I'm saying, education. So, it's always been something that kind of been lingering, you know, saying around. But um, I, I, it's, I shouldn't say this about myself. I've been reading, I've been reading a new book, The Four Agreements, and it, it talks about. I love that book. You know what I'm saying? How to so, but I always just say like, man, I'm I can't teach anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like I, because a lot of stuff that I learned, I just, I mean, it's just God given natural talent, like mm-hmm. kind of happens. So it, sometimes when it's trying to translate that to other people it kind of it's kind of a challenge for me but I feel like um maybe that's part of what I have to you know what I'm saying it's part of like I said we were talking about challenges that's something yeah. I have to kind of through especially if if I can reach a certain demographic or a certain group of people or kids that that maybe feel like the other people feel like or society feel like it's unreachable you know mm. what I'm saying I want to be you know what I'm saying I want to be that person that hey at least, at least I can say I I, I helped in that area. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. I, I think in my future, you know. Oh, oh, we we looking for forward to many great things from yeah, Mr. Yeah. Joe Dent. Um, and I'm a hold, I'm a hold on to it, y'all. I'm gonna make Man, sure. Put me, put me to the fire. <laughs> we, we got um, we got one more. Let's see, one or two more questions. Uh, Miss Miss Rhoda uh. Rhoda Yoder. Hey, Miss Yoder. It was one of my uh, old teachers in my old school. Um, she says, I'm, I'm listening to how little from the arts world uh, you got growing up, but how successful you were, you know, despite any of that. Mm-hmm. And she says she taught in Jackson Public Schools. She retired principal uh, from Jackson Public Schools. And, and she, she wished that, you know, the schools probably would have off, would offer more to, to support you. And yeah. so she's asking here, um, she loves what you're doing. And is there anything you wish you had in K through 12? Uh, probably, probably more trainings or, or mm-hmm. let me know what you think. Yeah, I think, um, I think like she, like she said, I think um, with arts, it's, it seemed like it just wasn't the, the emphasis wasn't put, you know, we live in the South, mm-hmm. we're from Mississippi, like, in school, your emphasis is gonna be put on your sports. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna that's it's everything kind of like sports driven. And mm-hmm. so with the creative side, you just didn't really have a lot of resources funneled, you know what I'm saying, to art classes or you know what I'm saying, after school programs for kids, you know what I'm saying, who wanted to draw and paint. So I think growing up, that kind of, you know, I don't that that was what was missing for me. You know, it's just having those outlets when 
when I, you know what I'm saying, I'm feeling creative that I can go to and having those mentors in place. Cause in mm-hmm. that's that's the other big part about it. Like if you don't have these people who've been in this field and 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 know these things, you can't. It's, 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 it just makes it, you can do it, but it just makes your journey so much harder. Like when I got to Mississippi State, I was so thankful for like my advisors and teachers. Mm-hmm. And cause they, they, you know what I'm saying? Exposed me to a whole new world as far mm-hmm. as design and art. And they were there to like guide me. And they, they seen my style and talent and they were able to mold it and help me understand how to mold myself into where I'm at today. So yeah, that mm-hmm. I, like I, I keep harping on, but that representation and mentorship in these, you know what I'm saying, areas that's kind of underdeveloped and not really um focusing or have resources aimed to creative spaces, I, I think that's the that's the biggest key, especially in Mississippi. Like I feel like there's so many creative people, you mm-hmm. know what I'm yeah, but we just we we lack the infrastructure and the resources that a lot of major metropolitan cities have, mm-hmm. and if we had that, we would be blowing a lot of these people out of the water. I'm I'm oh. positive. Oh yeah, no, I I think you know again that's that's something that we we're really dedicated to, uh, the being that how we provide some of these resources to people, um, mm-hmm. in in art, in the medical field, in journalism, in yeah. music. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to I went to a a, a power, power APAC, which is like a performing arts school back in in Jackson, um, that Jackson Public Schools uh kind of had, but it still was like a separated program from everything right. else. Um, and I and I definitely I could say I wouldn't be here where I am today without that you know uh, the music training you know that mu- I say music kept me out of trouble you know it gave me yeah. something to do something to focus on yeah. um, so I definitely hear you and that's and that's something that I know a lot of people are actively working on um, in right. the school systems so yeah. all right well um, we have what we call uh, like a little lightning round here okay. um, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, use this bring it to a close. Uh, right. Then I'll give some some wrap wrap up remarks, but um, we're just gonna ask you like maybe four or five you know questions. You you just give some quick answers, which you whatever you okay. think. Um, uh, Android or iPhone? Yeah, you got the iPhone me up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what uh what instruments you play? Uh, I play the drums and I'm self taught on the keyboard and piano. Okay. Uh, beach side or fire side? Man, that's a tough one because mm-hmm. both of those are relaxing. So, <laughs> growing up in Mississippi, we didn't have a lot of beaches and sand, you know what I'm saying, just around. <laughs> and my wife being from the West Coast in LA, when I first went out there, put my toes in the sand, did something to me. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, beach side. You know? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, you prefer... Uh, Salty or sweet? Man, I got a sweet too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me too. Cookie, Oreos, Kit Kat bars, all that. You know what I'm okay. saying? Sweet. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay. So uh, last thing, uh, words, last words of advice. Last words of advice for um, creative people, man, just keep going. You know, um, it's going to get, cha- it's going to be a challenge gonna get time where you want to like stop and give up and like everything that you seem like you draw or you create is trash and you just can't get in the groove like keep going mm-hmm. like draw through it it's, it's something I kind of say you know said to it like keep drawing through it keep creating through it and, and sooner or later you're gonna you're gonna find your sweet spot you know but it all comes through having perseverance and just keep trying so amazing amazing thank you so much joe for joining us today uh you know we really appreciate this Uh, i'm sure there's many artists and creators out there that appreciate everything you've been saying and all the wisdom you've been sharing um definitely again if you want to reach out to joe uh check them at three seven it's spelled uh, the number three and then uh spell s-e-a-v-e-n on all social media platforms and also check out his website arts in the, uh, the letter N and craft spelled with a K 
uh, mm-hmm. dot com. Um, and for those of you who are listening today, uh, if you want any uh, Bean Path merchandise uh, at the beanpath.org slash shop, uh, all the proceeds go towards the Bean Path. Uh, you can use the code July Beans for 15 percent off. Uh, for free shipping, uh, get you a t-shirt, you know, or, or a mug or a hoodie or something. Uh, we definitely appreciate that. So again, thank you so much, Joe. And um, yeah. we'll see y'all uh, next time. Yes, sir.